Welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm your host, Preston M. Smith. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm Preston M. Smith, at PMS Artwork Everywhere on Internet Land and Socials. I want to thank you for landing on this podcast. Whether you're a professional artist, just getting started in the art world, a collector of art, or just consider yourself a creative person, this podcast has something for you. I like to think of it as a fun way to rant and talk to other creative people about living the life of an artist, surviving and getting ahead in the art world, and enjoying your life. But most importantly, not waiting until you're dead to make it happen. All right, let's get started. Want to make a podcast? Spotify has got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere, and even earn money, all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then, you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify as well as Q&A polls to take conversations with your fans to the next level. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. I'm personally getting a lot out of Spotify for Podcasters, and I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com forward slash podcasters to get started. Hey, hey, hey Benny, man. How long do you think it takes to get famous? For, for an actor? Or for a painter? Whatever, man. Famous. Famous. Fame makes a man take things over. Fame lets a loose heart to swallow. Fame puts you there. Where things are hollow, hollow. Oh, 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 man, oh, man. I hope I don't get in trouble for that one. For either of those. Come on, it's just an homage. First homage to the movie Basquiat and the great actors Benicio del Toro and Jeffrey Wright for their little scene about fame. And then, of course... The late, great David Bowie. Uh, you know, I love him. And I just thought it was appropriate for this episode. Having a little fun, trying to keep it entertaining. Hope you all dug it. And uh, I guess you can tell what we're going to talk about today. We are going to talk about fame in a roundabout way, but we're also going to be talking kind of about expectation setting for yourself and for your art and for your career. Like, what do you actually see yourself doing? Where do you see and how do you visualize yourself in the future with your career? What's the end goal? Is it fame or is it something else? Is it something uh, a little more mellow? Is it something more relaxed? Uh, No judgment. It's all up to you. But this conversation got started at a show recently. We were at uh, Theodosia Marchant's show in Beverly Hills, and we were talking, a couple friends and I were talking, artist friends, and I were talking about what we wanted to do with our careers. And, you know, I was talking about how I just like uh, selling my work to people and inspiring people with the work. And, uh, you know, I was saying how I wanted to be famous early on. And, you know, I got to be honest with myself, there's always a little part of that that would love to be a household name and have some fame in there. But I've relaxed on that a bit. And we'll get into that in more detail later. But some people were talking about fame. Some people were talking about showing in, you know, blue chip galleries. Some people were talking about being a legend, which is, you know, that's great if you want to be a legend. But how do you get there? And more importantly, how do you get honest with yourself about what you really want out of your art career. Uh, That's what we're going to talk about today. So buckle up for a little episode on fame and intention setting. Welly, welly, well. So this episode and this topic is deceivingly important because I think a lot of us get sidetracked or even sabotage ourselves by secretly wanting something or thinking we want something and not really getting clear 
on what it is we want or just being distracted, being pulled in all different directions. When I first started, I'm going to get, you know, dirty and dark here, but when I first started, I was drinking heavily and I was really interested in that whole dark tortured artist thing and I thought that was like my ticket to you know, fame and stardom and being a household name as an artist. I was watching movies like Basquiat and Pollock and all these things and these tortured artists and what they were going through and reading uh, the Van Gogh letters and biographies on de Kooning. And for a while, I just like, I did the work. I was doing all the work. I was amassing a body of work. I was showing all the time, but I was like drinking heavily. And I would see these guys on all the shows and reading about them in the autobiographies and the biographies just like, you know, taking pulls on the whiskey flask in the back of the shows and just getting drunk and, and, you know, doing something stupid. And I thought that that was kind of cool. And I thought that was, you know, it, that's how you were supposed to do it. Like the Jim Morrison's and the, you know, Janis Joplin's of the world and people like that. You're just supposed to, you know, create a scene and create some drama and, you know, burn out kind of thing. Is it better to burn out or to fade away? Well, for me, I thought it was better to burn out at the time. And it was not doing a lot of good for me health-wise, and it wasn't doing a lot of good for my career, surprisingly, either. And you know, it's just not a lot of fun to be around. Now, you can achieve fame other ways, of course. You can achieve fame by, you know, getting on social media and rocking that and, you know, having a persona and developing all this. But really, what we're here to talk about is, like I said, intention setting, figuring out what you actually want to achieve with your career and then kind of reverse engineering that from there. Finding the end goal and then filling in the gaps and the steps through visualizing yourself doing this and putting some steps into place. I'm not really going to talk about all the steps that you can do because there's an infinite number of steps and variations of steps that kind of choose your own adventure uh, based on what you want to do and based on your life and based on your skills and all that. But really, let's talk about like, do you want to be the legend? Do you want to be the blue chip gallery artist? Do you want to be the social media fame artist? Do you want to be the billionaire artist who has the factory and a bunch of people working for them? Or do you want to be the artist who's selling consistently and getting your work out there to collectors around the world like I do uh, and making a living off your art? Do you want to be the artist who does it for fun as a hobby? Do you want to be the artist who, you know, socializes and goes to shows every weekend and shows you work from time to time, but just you really like to be in that kind of atmosphere? All of these things are fine and fair game, and it's your life, and that's the beauty of it. It's exciting to pick what you want to do. Like, if you want to be famous, man, if you want to be a legend, then great, set that intention See yourself at that place. Take the time to visualize what that looks like in your mind and then reverse engineer it. What are the steps in between where you are right now and where you need to get to to become that, to become, let's just say, you want to become famous, okay? Well, what are the steps you need to take from what you're doing right now, which may be just creating art a couple pieces a week, putting them on social media, getting out there, doing some shows from time to time. You know, maybe you sell a 1000 to $3,000 a year in art, uh, which is pretty normal uh, for people who are trying to be professional artists. Um, how do you take it from there to the stratosphere of being a famous artist and becoming a household name? Well, I don't have the secret sauce for you, but you have your own ability to visualize what that may look like for you and the steps that you need to take. And it's really all about filling in those gaps. Take some time every day to sit down and visualize yourself like, what's the next? What's the next goal? Make some lists, you know, do some daily affirmations, break it down into bite sized segments of, these are my goals that I want to achieve for this month. And then after I've achieved those goals or 80% of those goals or whatever, these are what I want to do the next month. And then maybe have a six month plan and then have a year plan and then just start ticking off those boxes as they go along. Now, this will keep you accountable and hold you accountable to what you want to see. If you're looking at this list, you can put it as a screensaver on the desktop of your computer. You can put it as a list stapled to your wall or written on your mirror so you see it every day. Or it can be something that you just, you know, you sit down and meditate with and you think about and you visualize with every day. But the important thing is really seeing it clearly and not being distracted by you know, what you think you want or what other people want or what other people are putting into your head. If you want to be famous and that's your end goal and you know that, 
with every cell in your body, well, okay, that's great. You know what you want to do. Now you just have to really see it and visualize the steps and see it and feel it and taste it and smell how it'll smell to be there and the atmosphere of what it'll be there. Maybe it means you buying like a huge house and throwing art parties, or maybe it means you having this huge studio and having people coming in, having studio visits and coming and buying your work and you're whining and dining people. Or maybe it means like, hey, you know, you blow up on social media and you get millions of followers and you become an influencer or whatever and you start selling your work through there and then people from blue chip galleries find you and take you on and start to kind of push you into the stratosphere with their list of blue chip clientele and collectors. That's great. There's so many ways to get there. And nowadays we have so many things at our fingertips as artists that are on social media and have like NFTs at our fingertips and have AI art at our fingertips, which I don't mean go into AI art for your art. That's, you know, something that you can decide for yourself, but it can at least help you develop some ideas. Um, There's so many things at your fingertips. There's so many ways to sell your work on art marketplaces. There's so many ways to sell your work through social media or on your website or through the normal channels of galleries or studio visits or whatever you want to do. You can come up with stuff like that, but it's really about finding little goals that you can achieve along the way and then just kind of upping the ante and like 10xing those as you get better and better and as you start to take off some of those boxes. And the beauty is these goals can always change and shift and you can adapt and move them and move the goalposts further or closer as you adapt and evolve as an artist. That's great. You can always do that. But you can find these little goals, these little year, two year, five year goals of what you want to achieve and really set your sights on that and go for it. And then once you achieve that, you can kind of reevaluate what you want. So let me give you an example a personal example, so you can kind of see and visualize what this may look like for you from someone who's done it, uh, yours truly. I was, as I said before, I was very interested in the kind of tortured artist stigma thing, and I realized that was not working for me, and I realized it was not just working for me on a human level and on a health level. So I started to switch my my goals. I started to really visualize what it might look like for me to be an artist who was surviving off of my work and being a professional artist. And it was not just an overnight thing. It took some steps. So my first step was, okay, I got to figure out how to quit my job, right? Quit my day job. And that, first of all, meant backing up and getting out of debt. I was in debt because I was putting a lot of my work on credit cards. So I had to learn how to get out of debt. So I got on a plan of just paying that off little by little. I even kind of hacked the system by stopping paying my insurance at the time and putting all my insurance money towards my debt and paying that off in the next two years, along with buckling down in other ways to do that. So I first of all set my sights on that and I just started paying that off with my wife at that point. She had the same goal with her own debt. We just sat down and we made a goal. If you're interested in some sort of financial advice like this, I would recommend looking at Ramit Sethi's I Will Teach You to Be Rich. I can't remember what it's called on Netflix now, but just look up Ramit Sethi. Uh, he's got some good ideas for people who are trying to get out of debt and trying to goal set and figure out how what it looks like to be rich for them uh, living their rich life. But anyway, Anyway, I don't want to digress too much. So I learned how to pay off my debt. I set a plan in action. I started doing that. I finally got myself out of debt. Then it was like, okay, I got to quit my job. So I started really setting my sights on selling my work online and figuring out a strategy where I started to make some sales, making more consistent sales. And I made like fifteen to $20,000 extra uh, doing that part-time in the first year. And I've just put all that towards savings, towards my cushion. And I'd already saved up another like five or 10 grand through just regular savings and paying down my debt and putting my money and allocating it some other places. And once I had that in place and I'd established that I was consistently making sales, I decided to take the jump finally of quitting my day job after 16, 17 years working and waiting tables, which everybody probably knows a little bit about that uh, from listening to the podcast. But that was a really long time coming and it was really something that made me feel horrible about myself, feeling like I was a failure as an artist. Now, it doesn't mean you have to be a failure, but in my mind, it was a failure because I had this goal and it just felt really good to finally burn the boats and jump into that, you know, both feet forward and just hit the ground running and start trying to live this life of a professional artist. And that gave me the confidence building up, like paying off the debt, 
saving up the money, establishing that I could make sales, and then jumping into it with that know-how and with roots that I'd established both in the art world and on the online art world of selling work and getting my name out there and getting in with the algorithm and you know establishing a routine of how I put my work up every day, which is a story in and of itself. But I put in a daily strategy that I was doing every single day towards this goal. And it didn't happen overnight. It was like, it took me a year after the 16 years of figuring out all the other crap in the art world. It took me a full year of just hunkering down and putting this action into place and doing it every single day. And then I started to gain some momentum and I started to get excited because I saw it paying off. And then I started doing more and I started upping the ante and I kept doing it. And, you know, of course there was a lot of adaptations in that process. But once I started seeing that this was something viable that I could do, and I started seeing myself doing things that I saw other artists doing, which I was using as a goal to get to their place, it was great. It made me feel like, ah, yes, I can do this. I'm doing this. And I just kept going with that, upping the ante and then started setting new goals of how am I going to start making more money? How am I going to start upping my prices now that I've established that people are buying my work for two, three years? How am I going to start upping my prices and my sizes and kind of 10xing my sales? And, you know, now at this day, um, 605 paintings sales later, I'm doing that. I still get the small sale from time to time, which is great. But now I'm getting more medium to large sales consistently. And then I started to figure out different ways of marketing that and then starting to get back into the brick and mortar world a bit. But also it was one of my goals in one of my visualizations that I saw if I established myself, like if I got so good that people couldn't ignore me with my sales online, people would come and look for me and look for my work. And that started to happen a bit. I started getting opportunities that I wasn't getting before that people People were kind of emailing me and talking to me out of the blue about certain projects and stuff. And that was really exciting. And it gave me some validation that everything that I was shooting for over these years and couple decades that I've been putting into action has been paying off. I didn't waste my time because I think for a lot of artists, it can be really depressing sometimes you're shooting for this goal and you don't see a lot of progress and you're like oh man am i what am i doing with my life and my time you know it's great to be inspired it's great to paint stuff but you also want to see some momentum so it starts with setting these goals and setting these intentions and then kind of reverse engineering how do you get there step by step by step by step and now i'm at a place where i'm altering and shifting my goals i'm going to be you know moving into different arenas and i'm opening myself up to different opportunities that I wasn't really open to before. So that's exciting. So these things are always evolving and we should always be evolving as artists. But first, get very clear on what you want to achieve right now. And that could change down the road, but be very clear. Have some sort of real sit down with yourself, almost like you're having an intervention with somebody else. Have an intervention with yourself where you really, really force yourself to get clear on what you want to achieve. If that's fame, that's fine. If that's success in any different way, that's fine. If it's just being a professional artist who's living off your work, that's also fine. If it's a hobby artist, that's fine too. But just get very clear with yourself on what you want and then start to fill in those gaps uh, along the way and start to visualize a path to get to that end goal. This has just been something that I wanted to uh, share with you because I think it is very important to just get clear. I think a lot of people are so busy and they're like distracted by so much crap and they hear so much noise out there in the world and on social media and you know art galleries and from different artists and you start to believe that what you should be wanting to achieve is what other people want to achieve. No, you are your own unique individual person and artist and you should be trying to establish what success looks like for you. So get clear on that. And we'll be talking more about strategies, of course, in podcasts to come and hearing other artists that I'm interviewing and how they got there also can help you fill in those gaps of figuring out a strategy for yourself. So hope you like this episode and uh, thanks for listening. We will see you on the next episode. Hey, now it's my turn. So listen up and turn it up. Was that? Did I? Did I do it? Did I nail it? Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. 
This has been the Living Artist Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I just want you to know that I appreciate you being here, and I'm grateful to be in your ears. Your art and creative life on this planet is meaningful, so thank you for sharing it with me. If you like this podcast, whatever platform you're listening to it on, please subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also leave me a positive review to show your support. This helps me to reach more people with the algorithmic magic and keep the show going strong. If you want to see more of what I do and check out the art that I create, you can visit my website at www.pmsartwork.com or follow me on social media everywhere at PMS Artwork. That's it for now. See you back here next time.